I kept to this diagram from the previous video, just to reference as we go along. The first thing I think I want to establish here is the interface where the engine can say, hey, I need to know what this key maps to, or I need to know what the key is for this action, and so on and so forth. So we're going to establish a simple interface that the game can implement to report that information to the engine, and we'll go from there. I'm going to take this out here. I think we'll close entities. Uh, right click, add, new folder, you can't see it off the screen, but I'm going to call it input. Right click on input, add, new item, header file, we'll call it I, I key mapper. The I stands for interface. I think that's kind of a Java C sharp thing to start things with I. I might be wrong there, but I'm going to carry it into C++ for this game engine. Click add, pound, if and def. Engine, I, key, mapper, H, enter, control L, control V, V, pound, find, control N, pound, and if, uh, namespace, input, generally I don't like namespaces, but I think for this project we would be wise, class, I, key, mapper, public, now I'm trying to set up iKeyMapper as an interface, but C++ does not support interfaces natively. If you've done anything in C Sharp or Java, you know the interfaces just define what functions should be there, but doesn't necessarily implement them. Well, we can fake that in C++ by just making a class that has abstract methods. Let's get to it. Virtual int get action for int key equals zero. Actually, this is going to be a const function, too. We're not going to modify the data members inside of the implementer. This equals zero means it's abstract, meaning there's no body, and you can't put anything else besides zero out here. It's simply a syntactic cue to the compiler to say, don't expect a body. Okay, virtual int get key for int action const zero same as well now these ints here we're going to define the actions and the keys with integer key codes for the keys and then actions will just be an enum i think it'll become more clear if we actually implement this interface so let's go do that add class click add my key mapper uh, looks good finish and then remember we set up our little hot key to to clean up this file, control KO, and there we go. Let's add some underscores there. I'm using alt drag with the mouse to get that in there. And then let's pound include input I key mapper. Let's implement I key mapper. I key mapper. I'm going to actually put the game side key mapper in the input namespace as well, just for good form. Control V, Control A, Control K, F to format the file. I notice in Visual Studio 2012, I can just hit Control K, D, and that formats the entire file. In C++, like it should have 10,000 versions ago. Let's grab the I key mapper, go in here, copy this, paste it in there. Control L, Alt drag over this, delete that. Alt drag over this and delete that. Grab this, Control C, Control Alt L to go to the Solution Explorer, or I could just move my mouse. <laughs> Double click here, get rid of this, if we can. Delete, Control V, Shift Tab. Uh, oh, we need the namespace though. Namespace, input, Control N, and my key mapper. Colon, colon, control C, control V, end key to get to the end of the line. Uh, white space helps. Control A, control K, F. Oh, okay. We need to map actions to keys and keys to actions. We're going to do that. We shall indicate actions using an enum. So let's add a header file, new item, header file. Let's say my... Menu, choice, hit enter, pound, if and def, my menu, choice, H, enter, control L, control V, V, pound, 
define control n pound and f uh, namespace input again and we shall do an enum my menu choice and the values in here what actions do we have in our game do you remember we have accelerate rotate left rotate right so accelerate bear with me I'll just put the equals comma out here rotate oops rotate left and rotate right I guess this is C++ and I should uppercase these constants. I'm going to put max out here. Just bear with me for that. You know what? I could uppercase all this, but I don't want to. Let me space all this out. Use the... Oh, let's do this with max, too. Equals... Comma. Alt. Drag down. 0x. I want four bytes here because these enums are ints and... And they're four bytes each, so one byte, two bytes, three bytes, four bytes. Probably, that might be a little extreme, but whatever. These need to be bitwise, mutually exclusive. If you don't understand bitwise operations, I have C++ videos on those. I also have the binary videos playlist, should help you out, understand there. But essentially, I'm going to treat these bytes as an array of bits, and I want to indicate which bits are turned on. Which are turned off, for example, if they have the up arrow and the left arrow down, then the bits for accelerate and rotate left will be turned on, but none of the other bits will be. So I need to manually make these bitwise mutually exclusive. One, two, four, eight. That does the trick. Let me show you another trick. If you don't like that, I'll just paste this down here and alt-drag over all this. We can say accelerate is 1, and then we can say rotate left is accelerates value, but that's shifted over to the left one. Rotate uh, right, no left, rotate rotate right's value, sorry I got mixed up there, rotate right's value is rotate left's shifted over 1, so we start with 1, shift it over 1, shift it over another one, and then max will be rotate right over one. So pick your poison. Some people like this. Some people like it. Hardcore binary. I don't know if I really care. I just want the enum. My menu choice. One side note I need to point out. In C++11, you can say class out here, and that adds scope to an enum. However, Visual Studio's 2010 compiler does not support it. I'm not sure if 2012 does. Uh, very quickly, we should upgrade to 2012. <laughs> I've been stuck in 2010 too long, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I think for now, we'll leave that out. This is scopeless, meaning accelerate, rotate left, and rotate right are global to the entire file that they are included in. Let's go to the key mapper here. Get action four. I'm going to say switch on the key. This is much like an associative array, like a dictionary or a map if you want to implement this using a dictionary or map. Have at it. I'm trying to stay as lean and mean as possible. Uh, the key tool. So we'll, this is where we tell what keys map to which actions. So let me grab our actions. I'll alt drag. Well, let me align these equal sign. Look how picky I'm being here. Usually I'm not this picky, but it might help with readability in the long run. I'm going to alt drag over these, copy them, paste them, alt drag down, case, end key, colon, 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 and then uh, I guess we can tab that in. And we need to also include, I forgot to include, my menu choice up there. So the key for accelerate would be the up arrow. So virtual key code up, I believe it is. We want to return that. Let's pound include windows. That's a big fat include for sure, but that's how we get these virtual key codes. So accelerate is up. That is a really big include for one little CPP file. Oh, the pain. Maybe we should we can go fix that later. There's there's actually something called Windows Lean and Mean, if I remember right. We have to define this before the preprocessor processes the Windows.h file. But I believe we say pound define win32 lean 
and mean, I believe it is. I believe it is. Let me right click on this and open document windows.h, which pound includes a bunch of stuff and define and yada yada yada. Control F, win32, lean, and mean right here. So if we define that, then we'll only get these includes. I'm not on a Mac, so we won't get those. We'll get that and yada yada. I think. That does make it leaner and meaner, I suppose. In theory, it does. We'll leave that in there. Uh, rotate left. Return virtual key code left. And uh, for right, return control U, VK, right, like so. And then down here, we'll get to compiler error because the compiler can't see that. Hey, in all cases, we should return. Uh, so let's return negative one here to indicate an error and I'm going to go as far as saying assert false okay if we get this far something's wrong let's pound include C assert right there we shall replace assert later with our own logging system soon enough um, now we got so that's the get action for method the get key for is this but swapped so I'm actually going to copy this paste it bring this back we're going to switch on the action instead and then watch this I'm going to do my macro magic control shift R uh, right arrow control right arrow control shift right arrow to highlight control X down arrow end the key left arrow hmm that's not gonna work yet well ah, spacebar control V <laughs> hold down control left arrow left arrow Shift down with control right arrow, control X, up arrow, end key for good form. Just make sure the cursor is at the end of the line. Left arrow, control V, backspace, get rid of that space I put in there. Down arrow, down arrow, home key, put the cursor at the beginning of the line. And for three lines, or for three switches, that was probably overkill, but... I don't know why I like to show off with these macros. Control Shift P, Control Shift P to play the macro, and there we go. And I need the same thing down here. Assert false, return negative one. I think we're good. Control Shift B. Let's see if we build. Looks like I'm missing a semicolon. Control Shift B. Build succeeded. Okay. So going back to this game. I know I kind of just blew through that and coded a lot and talked while I did it. But we now have a way to map actions to keys and keys to actions. And we have the way for the engine to ask the game about that. Now we need to go down to the engine part here and, and put the meat in there so the game can say, hey engine, what actions do I need to perform or worry about on this frame?